Hello, and I'm back, and I have two amazing people that you're going to hear from. Um, everyone's bio, so you can see their full the weight of their accomplishments, is underneath the video. But I first want to introduce um, Laura Liswood, who inspired me to make 50-50. And so really, you inspired the whole day, Laura. Um, she uh, <laughs> convenes elected women presidents and prime ministers, which is such an incredible role. And she is going to be speaking today with Dr. Joyce Banda, who was president of Malawi and the first woman president. And I can't wait to hear what you two speak about. So I'm going to leave it up to you two. And Laura, why don't you start with the introduction? Thank you. Thank you, Tiffany. And thank you for your creativity and effort, initiative, energy on both 5050 Day and the great video and all of the work you're doing. So thank you on behalf of women around the world. Um, Dr. Bondo, what a pleasure to see you again, Madam President. Uh, thank you very much for joining us today. Thank you for having uh, You have an extraordinary background. Thank you for having me. Great, great. You were the first female president of Malawi. Uh, you have the Joyce Bonda Foundation. You're also a member of the Council of Women World Leaders, and we thank yes. you for that. Um, so, you know, as the first female president of Malawi, Tell us in some spe specifics how you have had an impact as a woman leader on the people of Malawi, on the women of Malawi, on the men, on the children. I think um, I am one of the few leaders, not only in Malawi, but uh, on the continent of Africa, that graduated to the position of leadership from the civil society. And the, because of that, I had the, all the social needs and the situation of the poor in my mind when I went into state house. And I decided to take advantage of that. And I had already formed the four organizations, the National Association of Business Women, the Young Women Leaders Network, the National Association, uh, the, I mean, the Joyce Panda Foundation, and the Hunger Project. All these led to my receiving of the Africa Prize for Leadership with a Sustainable End of Hunger. When you ent go into leadership from that uh, background, you have the advantage of having issues of people that are disadvantaged at heart. In my particular case, being a Malawian, I was very clear in my mind that 80% of the people are rural based. So to cut a long story short, the Joyce Banda Foundation reached 1.3 million Malawians. And I, I, when I got into office, the first thing I did before I even appointed my cabinet was to set up the presidential initiative on the safe motherhood and the maternal health. The second initiative was to set up an initiative, the presidential initiative on hunger and poverty eradication. I know that this is not only unique to Joyce Band. I know that all women, when they get into leadership, Issues that become important and paramount to them are issues of women and children and their well-being. So for me to answer that question, what is it that you have done to uh, 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 impact the lives of people during your leadership? I can just look at the numbers and say, well, if 1.3 million people were lives were touched, what more if we had the 1,000 joy standards? And so I know that having many women in leadership benefits ordinary people. Because when women get into leadership, they focus on issues that affect women and children. And finally, I, women, when they get into leadership, they understand very clearly that they, look, they lead their nations at the pleasure of the people that gave them the mandate in the first place. And when women get into leadership, they understand that leadership is a love affair. You must fall in love with the people that you serve, and the people must fall in love with you. When that happens, you will never allow the people you serve to be exploited. It is your moral responsibility to protect and to uh, mobilize and love and help and support and protect the people that gave you the mandate in the first place. Excellent, thank you. So you would like an, another thousand Joyce Bondas as, like as leaders. I, I like that. That's okay. That's very good. Um, tell us a little bit of some of the challenges 
that you faced as a woman leader? And how would you encourage young women in Africa, in Malawi, to get more involved in the political life? Yeah, um, I think the challenges that we face, mostly that I faced, um, are general. I cannot remember any day when some of the members of my team that were male undermining my leadership. I don't remember that. Unfortunately, it was women sometimes that went against me, that made statements to ridicule me or to scandalize my name. But I think that all depends on your approach as a leader. I think what women have is the capacity to love and the capacity to mobilize and the capacity to form teams that support you in your way. Women understand that they can't know it all. So they build teams better than men would do. The issue of power is, is, is not important as far as women are concerned. Women want to get into leadership so they can serve, so that they can help those that are disadvantaged. So the challenges that I feel that I faced during my time as head of state are those are the fact that I didn't have adequate resources to help those that needed help. I didn't have the support of my fellow women to help me during my time. The, the, the women, I, real, I realized they needed training, they needed economic capacity to compete, to stand for elections, just like men, but they couldn't because they were women. Those are the kind of challenges that I had, but personal challenges, I didn't have personal challenges where I was undermined because I was a leader. And I, 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 I have been asked, why is this? I said, maybe, maybe other women would say they were not accepted. They had to fight the male domination. In my case, I had been a leader in the civil society. So psychologically, Malawians were prepared to have me as a leader one day because there was no surprise. And maybe it is also the history of how I came in. A president that and me had been elected together. My turn has come because he has passed away. The, 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 the men, a group of his party, wanted to stand in the way of allowing me to stand for office and then the whole nation just came and surrounded me and supported me and the army supported me to make sure that nobody stands in the way now that comes about if you have fallen in love with the people and the people have fallen in love with you because at that moment the whole nation of malawi refused to accept that i could be denied a constitutional right to take oath as head of state what is it going to take globally in Africa, any place else? You travel around the world constantly. What is it going to take for us to get to that wonderful goal of 50 50? I have made this statement before, and it has been controversial. Some people have refused to agree with me, but I would like to say it again. I believe that we have five continents and in each part of the world, there will be different strategies that will take us there. We must understand our environment. We must know how to navigate that environment. We must know how to form, forge partnerships and relationships within that environment. So to speak as an African woman, and I've said this before and people have said, we don't want to agree with you because time for negotiations and the diplomacy is gone. And I am saying, well, maybe there's something the world can learn from Africa because we haven't done badly. We have had four female presidents. Right now, uh, uh, Mauritius has a female president as well. Other parts of the world are still trying. They haven't made it yet. Therefore, maybe we must listen to one another. What Africa has done and continues to do is to say we shall not be confrontational. We shall work with our men. If we are saying men are part of the problem, then they must be part of the solution as well. We must work together with them. We must listen to one another. Mutual respect. They will assist us if they know they are not being challenged or confronted to get to where we want to be. So we must know how to navigate. Break one, 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 one brick at a, build one brick at a time. The country with the highest number of members of parliament that are female is on the continent of Africa. The number with the highest number of cabinet ministers is on the continent of Africa. And Africa has had four heads of state that are female. 
Well, maybe we are doing something right, but that's what is working for Africa. But it is also possible that that can't work in other parts of the world. So my, my, my humble contribution and response to that question is that we all must look at our environment. We must also look at our traditions and culture and see what works better. If I am confrontational in Africa, they'll just shut me out. And that's the end of the journey. But in Africa, I can also find a way of working with the same men to help me build up my position to get to the point where I want to be. So India shall look at what works for them. Britain and America, and make sure that we accelerate that speed by taking advantage of the opportunities that exist in those different environments. Finally, there's a lot of young women uh, celebrating 50-50 Day today. Tell us the message that you want to send to them, that you want them to hear, that how you want them to engage in the world, to create the change that you have as a vision. And I, I, the paper that I have just published that talks about women leaders uh, promoting and supporting women leaders in Africa, I am saying that African women are not asking to participate in leadership out of the blues. We have always been leaders. Historically, we were leaders. People were leaders. Women were leaders before colonization. Somehow, with colonization, with patriarchy setting, and women were pushed aside until 50 years later when they started it men started agitating for change and, and freedom, that men, ro uh, women rose and to the occasion and started fighting side by side with their men. So the Winnie Mandela's, the Rose Chiwambos in Malawi, the uh, Abetina Sisulu, and all those. Now, what has happened now is that now that we are here, there's so much to do still. We know what the challenges are. And we have gone through a rough time to get to where we are. It's been hard. But it, it, we must now rise as women leaders, as Joyce Banders, at my age, and support and mentor the younger ones to come up. My message to the younger ones is that in 1995, we went to Beijing. We were fired up. We were determined to change the situation. It wasn't going to be that status quo. We will do something about the situation quickly. So we went to Beijing, we came back. But what I have observed is that the women then, the younger women found it easier. They thought the battle was over. It is not over. We are only beginning. But we must not be selfish. Zanere Mbek, the wife of the former president of South Africa, said, when you come up the ladder, don't drop the ladder. Leave it there for the younger ones to come up as well. So while we have gone through difficult, difficult times and it has been hard because we didn't have mentors or role models, we didn't have support, we must provide that support now. Because the Joyce Banders have been there and have retired. Our Joyce Banders have been there now, they, they are tired. Or, but they have enough energy to provide mentorship and support to younger women to come up. Why? Because it is necessary for us to have a critical mass of women leaders on the continent of Africa. And in, now in the, in, at the Woodrow Wilson Center, where I'm serving as a uh, 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 distinguished fellow, I have recommended the support of younger women. And we have found, I had an event last month where we brought in two 14-year-olds that have already formed organizations and are supporting fellow women, the other child who, is, who started her organization seven years old is now 14 years old. She has distributed 10,000 school bags to fellow children on the continent of Africa. That's what I'm talking about. We must identify them because I'm raising a controversial issue in my paper. But leaders are born. And they say, no, they are not born, you can develop them. But I'm saying, well, but research is saying they are born with 30% traits. So in Africa, we must be alert and watchful and look for those that have got those traits. Bring, fish them out. Mentor them, support them, build up support around them, make sure we are providing opportunities to them. And for the young women, what I can say to them, this is our time, this is our opportunity. We have a moral obligation to build ourselves to become leaders. You have no excuse as young leaders. We could have had excuses because we didn't have to look up to. Now you don't have that excuse. So it is up to you to rise and it is up to us to support you. Thank you.
Thank you. A, a very powerful message, uh, one that I know that you're using all of your energy towards. Uh, we still need you, along with the other thousand Joyce Fondas out there. And I think that for 50-50 Day today, we need those young women and young men yes. to support this effort. Thank you, Thank Thank you. you so much. Thank, Thank you so much. You. Thank, Thank you, you, Madam President. Thank you. Yes, and I want to thank you both. That was a fantastic conversation. You have so much wisdom to share, and we have so much to learn from you both. So thank you for all the courageous work you continue to do in this world, working towards thank getting you, Thank you for what you are doing. I was amazed to see uh, the clip on, on, on TV, and thank you very much, both of you. Thank you. Thank you. Should I close that? Yep.